hello everyone so today I'm gonna show you in this top-down template a preview of the path this character will take before it moves before it start moving so it's like this so as the character moves the path is shown like this and as we move around the cursor it in updates the path in real time uh, that will be taken by the character if we click on this point uh, when we play the game right so let's see how to implement this today and this episode is sponsored by this generous patron thank you very much for your support right um, I'm gonna select games next and top-down template yeah I'll name this as show path create project right so here we have the usual top-down template which most like this okay so what I want to do is uh, when I click or when I like move this cursor I want to preview the path this character will take in order to do, in order to go to that point okay so in the top-down character First, uh, without having a spline mesh, let me add just add a spline component. Let me make it longer like this. Okay. Right. So this has only two points. And if I go here, we can't see this line in the game view. So let me show. Uh, splines are not visible in the runtime. So let's use, let me delete this. Let's use a spline mesh. And as the mesh, okay. I think I have another mesh that I. Um, I'm gonna use this cylinder. Right. Okay, it's too large. Ah, yeah, we can't. Just, uh, just one spline mesh is not enough. We have to use this along with the uh, spline combat. Okay, so this is for testing. Again, let me add a spline. Just a spline component. No, it shouldn't be a child of spline mesh. Right, so this spline is just for testing. Uh, we have to add it in the runtime so in here uh, let's just this is just for preview then we will promote this to a function and do it in the runtime this is just the previewing of this blind mesh part to show the path the character would take so here we first we have to get number of spline points because um, okay, we have another option called number of spline segments. Okay, I think we can use this one also. Right now, uh, using this, let's do a for loop. First index should be zero. Last index should be 
the number of spline segment minus one because index starts from zero and if there are two segments that means the index are zero and one and yeah so now here we can add spline mesh component so here as the mesh I'm gonna select the cylinder I just imported and it's nothing special just a simple cylinder mesh and this doesn't have two-sided rendering enabled that's why I don't see the inside but that's okay right let's spline mesh component and here let's uh, set start and end so we need to start position and start tangent and end position and end tangent so now we have this index so from this spline we can get uh, pos position location and tangent at the spline point right now as the point we can use this index so this is going to be the starting position location and tangent and I'm gonna use local space so for the end position and uh, tangent I have to use the same function but one added to this because it should be the next point in this spline and and location and tangent right now let me delete this and here you see this dynamically added is added cylinder but it's too large can we make it smaller yeah here let's select this node and set the scale of y and it's at 2.1 then compile now you can see it's a much small spline right now if I update this spline you see wait we can't change the scale see it mess up All right so let me keep the scale same or change this one also no we can't change the scale this has to be one by one by one right then can we make this smaller in the mesh itself under import scale yeah what if I make this point one and re-import okay now it's a small and here oh no ah it's fine yeah it was just a I had to recompile okay now you can see as I add more points 
is this path is updated so what I'm going to do it in order to show the path I'm going to uh, do this in the runtime so first let me move the spline down oh wait I can't right anyway then let's keep it in the same location also we don't need this supply mesh right now we do have a way to show this is flying path but still this is not complete oh we need to disable collisions as well we can do that here oh it's already don't have any collisions and uh, no overlap events all right uh, now shall we collapse this part to a macro not necessary to be a function let's call it add spline meshes right and we don't need this in the construction script so I'll disconnect this that's only for preview purposes oh, this one giving us a warning we don't really need that yeah okay okay now the next step is uh, when the character sorry uh, when the player click on one of these places so when uh, we move the cursor around the world we need to show the path that this character would take right and we already have this cursor to world uh, object which is in the game uh, this yellow or green circle that you can see right under the mouse and you can see how the location is calculated in here cursor to world location is calculated using get player controller and get hit result under cursor by channel and from that we get the location so we already have the location pointed by the mouse cursor right now let's add a function uh no not right function let's add a custom event show path right so now here now we need to know what the path actually is so for that we can use this cursor to world get world location and from the navigation system uh, path alright here we can use this find path to location synchronously and from this we can find get path points right so this is array of vectors uh, here we need to set the starting point get that uh, location right so uh, before adding uh, the spline meshes let's just uh, add spline points to the spline so uh, first get a reference we need to clear existing spline points right uh, then from this we can get path points 
so here we have all the points we can run a for each loop to get all the access of all the path points so here again on the spline component let's add spline point like this and may here make sure to use the world space otherwise we will get incorrect result and also uh, the first point of the spline should always be the current location of the actor so add spline point as the input so before running this as the input make sure to use get actor location as the position and also in world space right right uh, now let's preview this oh, in order to show the spline we have to use this show splines now we can see this plan but you can see it's not visible because it's under the it's under the flow so right so what you can do here is uh, but also I think we already get the position right below the character so we may not need to add this point only the path points should be enough right so here uh, let's add mm, let's say 30 in the same direction so it should be it will be above the ground Now you see the path is drawn as we move around the cursor. If I click, you can see a spline is also following, uh, which is not cool. So what you can do is let's. Uh, when we call this show path or actually in the beginning we can get this spline and do a detach from component so it will not be attached to the player when it moves the points stay but here it is updating as the character moves so I guess we should not do that so how do we prevent doing it right here in the show path let's uh, we have movement component get can access speed no, get velocity. We should show this only if this is equal to zero or roughly equal to zero. Let's set a branch here. So when the character is on the move, the spline should not update. See, only when the character stops, now we get
okay right now how to add the spline meshes for this and also we can do one more optimization uh, technique for this we don't always have to update this we don't have to update this in every tick if the target location is not changed so we access the target location like this using this cursor to world so let's promote this to a variable let's call it target location no preview target location because this is going to be our previous target location right and when we call this show path event next time we can compare the current location uh, the distance between the current location of the cursor and the previous location like this between this one and the previous target location if the distance is uh, larger than if this is larger than let's say 50 we should redraw the path the branch here all right otherwise we don't have to update it let's check again show spline see now for a small variation a small change in the cursor it doesn't update that's good for performance especially when we have this spline meshes in place right the next part is how to add the mesh component mm, right we already have this add spline mesh part but here we actually once we add spline meshes we don't really delete them uh, that's not good so let me promote this to a variable let's call it spline meshes and disconnect it and turn this into a type of array right now we don't need it here the reason to do it is so that I can automatically get the spline mesh component variable type here so right then once we add a spline mesh we can add to this array okay and then uh, before yeah this function this macro will also be called called more than once so we have to run uh, for each loop on this and destroy previous components before we add new ones like this and also need to clear this array otherwise there will be all the invalid references okay is that all also here make sure that you have make this movable because otherwise you get the same a warning we got earlier oh we didn't use the macro here in the show path so after adding spline points we have to call add spline meshes 
let's connect this completed into the output it's not necessary but otherwise let's say if we have something to call after this point we can use it right now let's see mm -hmm. I don't see anything why Uh, why don't we let's again test it by keeping this part and even though we detach it let's keep world right so is this macro not working what is working what's wrong yeah maybe this was the reason now let's check in the runtime oh yeah it is working cool it is working okay all right so if I press move oh one more thing we have to when we add this spline meshes we have to uh, detach them also from component otherwise they will move along as the player moves right now see they don't move oh wait why oh, it's not showing properly uh -huh. right I think I should use world space here oh no 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 right actually I solved the problem we have to keep these in local space and we don't need to uh, detach the spline component from the uh, from the character because the spline component is not going to be visible in the runtime in the game we were just uh, visualizing it for debug purposes so but we can detach the spline meshes then this works properly so see it works perfectly now the only thing remaining to do is uh, showing this adding a better material to this cylinder to the M supply Let's make it uh, translucent and define a color like blue and add a little bit of uh, emission too. yeah like this and opacity let's set it to 0.5 right we can adjust this if we want and let's assign it material sorry that's the material and the spline right 
right now it looks like this okay and that's all and as always project files will be available for the download through patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patreon club see you in another episode goodbye